All right, what is up you guys and welcome back to TGTV. So in this video, we will be ranking each installment from the NBA 2K franchise from the best to the best, all the way down to the worst. Remember as you're watching this that the list is completely subjective and up to debate. However, this list is heavily influenced by the community feedback and reaction to each year's game. If you have any opinions different than mine, please make sure to leave them down in the comments as any thoughts I'll love to read and consider for future videos. Also, because of how dramatically gaming has changed since the release of the original NBA 2K, we'll only be ranking the most recent 10 installments to keep things fair. So without further ado, let's get into things. Coming in at number 10, NBA 2K9. NBA 2K9 was released right in the middle of the PS3 generation. Its time of release may have had some effect on why it comes in at this bottom spot. Despite strong gameplay for the time, NBA 2K9 introduced almost no new features in comparison to its predecessors. A lack of new features and minimally enhanced gameplay led to this game feeling more like a roster update to NBA 2K8. This was by no means a bad basketball game, probably not worth shelling out the extra $50 over past year's games. NBA 2K9 did receive generally favorable reviews receiving an 82 out of 100 and an 84 out of 100 respectively for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 at the time. Although it was a good basketball game during its day and age, it just can't compare to the future games of the NBA 2K franchise. Coming in at number 9, NBA 2K12. Coming off the heels of fan favorite NBA 2K11, the successor to the wildly popular installment fell flat. Rather than building on its successes, NBA 2K12 removed the innovative and addicting crew mode. Along with that, they removed the Jordan moments as well as different blacktop events. Despite this, NBA 2K12 did have a fresh and interesting soundtrack, along with a very fun My Career mode. Virtual basketball fans can't exactly hate on this game, but in a lot of ways it felt like a step down from the past games. Critics however loved this installment as it received a 90 aggregate score on both PlayStation and Xbox, as it was praised for new and dynamic gameplay. Critic reviews however didn't stop NBA 2K fans from questioning the company about what might be missing from that year's game. Coming in at number 8, NBA 2K18. Where do I begin with this year's game? By far, in my opinion, the most polarizing NBA 2K game thus far. My career cutscenes ranged from bad storylines all the way to the uninterested characters that filled them. The neighborhood acted as a billboard for product placement and encouragement towards microtransactions. And while we're on that subject, this year's game also made it nearly impossible to be successful in my career mode and its encompassing features without first shelling out the $50 you need to get the VC to upgrade your player. The only shining element I've found in this year's game, however, was the NBA 2K League. The problem with this, though, is that the average NBA 2K player doesn't get to experience everything that those guys are getting. So outside my career mode, other features really got little to no attention. The only reason this game ranks above the others is due to its graphical and gameplay values, despite the gameplay being kind of questionable itself. Coming in at number 7, NBA 2K17. NBA 2K's 2017 installment was a fun, but not completely polished game. 2K17's My Career Mode, as well as the encompassed Park and Pro-Am game modes, introduced the new archetype system in an effort to balance out playstyles. This was a feature I could get on board with to avoid players that could excel in everything. I saw this as a bit of an issue back in the NBA 2K16 game. Another benefit to this was that it created a jumping off point for further specification, as well as customization in future characters. This year's biggest problem though, lied in the servers. Constant lagging and disconnects plagued NBA 2K17, it made the game almost unplayable at times. You'd think it should have been called Waiting for Opponent 2K17. All jokes aside, this was a really fun game. Despite a lot of people realizing it, 2K17 ushered in a lot of elements that the franchise will look to build on in future installments. Coming in at number 6, NBA 2K15. NBA 2K15 will always be a fan favorite due to its expansion on the park mode and the introduction of the legendary Jordan Rec Center. For those of you who didn't play NBA 2K15, the JRC felt like basically a mix of the park and pro-am put together. It was a fun and new exciting game mode that so many people found engaging and just to be a big step up from prior games. 2K15 did have some issues however ranging from their servers to the demigod debacle that really never got addressed. Park got a massive facelift this year as I mentioned, introducing the three new affiliations. The heated Park competitions made the game mode so competitive and you always felt like you were playing for something. This game was just straight up fun. Coming in at number 5, NBA 2K14. 
NBA 2K's 2014 installment had a massive advantage on its other year's games just based on its time of release. Coming out in late 2013, NBA 2K14 became the first game in the franchise to be released on the current generation of consoles. The game wowed fans and critics alike with lifelike graphics and gameplay like nothing else we had seen before. That in itself was enough to push the game over the top, but the introduction of my GM and my league, as well as the cutscenes for each mode, made the game feel so much more real. NBA 2K14 was the groundwork for current generation 2K games, and it felt very much complete. Another huge addition to this game was the park. Although 2K14's version of the park was not necessarily beloved instantly, it introduced the framework for one of 2K's most acclaimed game modes. Overall, this year's game introduced a blueprint for everything people love and sometimes hate about all future NBA 2K games. Coming in at number 4, NBA 2K10. It was impossible not to give NBA 2K10 a top 5 spot as it was the first game in the franchise to include my career mode. Every virtual basketball player's dream is just to feel the experience of playing in the NBA. The newness and the fresh perspective on basketball gaming was introduced in a way that debatably felt better and more realistic than even NBA 2K18's version. Despite most people thinking of its popularity in 2K11, this game was also the first to include crew mode. Crew mode, now called Pro-Am, gave online my career its first prototype and became an instant fan favorite mode. This year's game felt like the biggest jump thus far in the franchise when it was released, and it actually left its fans more than satisfied. Not to mention, it definitely had one of the coolest looking covers in 2K history. Coming in at number 3, NBA 2K16. 2016's 2K game approached basketball from a whole new perspective. Never has an NBA 2K game gone so right, and yet so wrong in the same year. Fortunately, its wrongs were very limited and masked by some absolutely incredible rights. Let's start off with the wrongs though, beginning with a Spike Lee joint. This force-fed and unrealistic storyline, despite being liked by many, gave most gamers headaches as they were forced to be living the dream during their rookie year of my career. Luckily, it only lasted a season and many of the cutscenes were skippable. Now for positives, gameplay felt amazing this year and just in time to introduce Pro-Am, aka Crew 2.0. The most requested game mode in 2K history was back with insane customization, leaderboards, and even cash tournaments. For longtime 2K players, it felt like a dream. 2K16 felt like a lot of good ideas that had been building for years and just waiting to burst, and finally they did, all in one game. Despite some connectivity issues, the game's online features were phenomenal, and this felt like one of the best games in the franchise yet. Coming in at number 2, NBA 2K13. Although it's up for debate, I'll take this statement to the grave with me. NBA 2K13 had the best My Team mode ever. The completely vanilla approach to My Team was a refreshing change from the EA Sports Ultimate Team mode that became ever more complex with each passing year. Never before was pulling your favorite players from packs so much more exciting and just so much more satisfying. Not to mention, 2K introduced simple cutscenes and a lot of new features to my career. One often forgotten feature of this game was Blacktop, which many of you can think of as the predecessor to Park. This is one of the only games in the franchise's history that I felt like I could just log on and have fun playing any game mode. As the final fully last generation game, NBA 2K13 achieved everything we expected and more. Coming in at the top spot, NBA 2K11. Sometimes I question how much the love for NBA 2K11 is nostalgia, and how much is because it's just that damn good of a game. My career added a variety of features this year to add to the engagement and realism of the mode. 2K's popular crew mode came back but even better as it kept expanding with better online stability and further customization for players as well as their courts. Blacktop events such as the celebrity game, dunk contest, and three point contest were enough to keep you engaged for hours. A very unique feature in this game that so many people remember was the Jordan Challenge, which offered an opportunity to relive MJ's 10 greatest moments ranging from the flu game to the finals. The game also offered various new mechanics and gameplay updates to make it the smoothest feeling 2K game that fans had seen yet. Considered quote, the truest adaptation of sports yet, NBA 2K11 was beyond its years, clearly, as it ranks at my number one spot for the NBA 2K franchise. So there you have it, each of the past 10 2K games ranked from the worst all the way up to the best. 
If you agreed with my list, make sure to let me know down below. And if you didn't, please also make sure to leave your thoughts as I'd love to hear them. Either way, make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe because we have so much more awesome content coming. If you guys have any other lists or rankings you want to see me do, make sure to also leave that down below and feel free to tweet at me at TGTVOfficial. I'm Mitch from TGTV. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.